Okay, so I promised another little video about equivalence relations. So this is the second video in equivalence relations. I'll actually do a third video in equivalence relations probably before the end of the day. So let's recall where we're at. Um, definition 129 tells us what an equivalence, what a relation is. And a relation, it turns out, we can is any subset of the product of two sets. So any subset of the product of two sets defines a relation between the two sets. And a relation on a single set, if we use that language, is a subset of the product of that set with itself. Now we've already looked at some relations. We looked at, in particular, functions. So we can think of a function as being a relation uh, from x to y. And now we're going to look at a different sort of relation or a different class of a relation called an equivalence relation. So an equivalence re relation, and we use that little um, uh, almost equal sign, on a set S is a relation first of all, so it's a subset of the product of S with itself. So it's a relation on S. And then it has three um, specific properties that it has to satisfy. So first of all, reflexivity, which is for all x in S, in other words if you pick any element of S, then it has to be related to itself. Thinking of this in terms of, the, of a subset of the product, that means that x comma x has to be in that subset of the product. Uh, the next property it has to satisfy is symmetry, or it has to be symmetric which says that if you choose two elements of S that are related to each other, so X and Y, such that X is related to Y, then YX also has to be in your set, or Y has to be related to X. Thinking of that as a subset of the product, that means if you have the ordered pair XY, you need the ordered pair YX in your set. And the third property it has to satisfy is if you're given three elements, x, y, and z, with the special property that x is related to y and y is related to x, then you need to also have x related, or y is related to x and y, x is related to y and y is related to z, you need to have that x is related to z. Sorry, I misspoke there. So in terms of ordered pairs, if you have the ordered pair XY and the ordered pair YZ, you need the ordered pair XZ. A little bit of language. Um, if we have the ordered pair XY in our, rel our relation, we write X and then the symbol for relation here Y, and we read that as X is related to Y. So any proof that a relation is an equivalence relation on S has three parts. Um, part one, which is to show reflexivity, you have to pick an element of S and show that it's related to itself. In other words, you have to show that the ordered pair X comma X is, is in that set. So two, to prove symmetry, you have to pick two elements in S that you know are related, so X, or uh, by assumption are related, so X is related to Y, and show if two things are related, then the opposite relation also exists. Y has to be related to X. So if, if X is related to Y, then Y is related to X. And the third thing is transitivity. And that is if you have three elements uh, from S with the special property that X is related to Y and Y is related to Z, you need to show that X is related to Z. In other words, if you have x, y, and y, z, you need to show x, z. Okay, let's do an example that's very similar to the, to the homework problems. So here I'm going to define a relation as a subset of z cross z, where z is the integers. And this relation is going to be defined by, well, if the difference between, if the first one minus the second one is divisible by 5, then it's, then it, then it's an ordered pair in our set. 
So I take any two integers. If their difference is divisible by five, then they're related to each other. So for example, um, zero and five are related or um, 15 and 75 or maybe more subtly um, 3 and 8 are related but for example 3 is not related to 2 because 3 minus 2 is 1 it's not divisible by 5 so we want to show that this relation is an equivalence relation so it's going to have three parts first we need to show that R is reflexive so we choose an element of Z, so an element of our set here, and we show that um, it is related to itself. Well, what do we have to show to show it's related to itself? That means the first thing minus the second thing has to be divisible by 5. So here we have x minus itself. We need the ordered pair xx is equal to 0. Well, 0 is divisible by 5 right? Um, 5 is not divisible by 0, but 0 is divisible by 5. 5 times 0 is 0. So 5 divides x minus x, and so x is related to x. So yeah, we've shown that it has the property of being reflexive. Now we need to know that it's symmetric. So we choose an x and a y in z, such that x is related to y. Well, what does it mean for y, x to be related to y? It means that x minus y is divisible by 5. Another way of writing that is x minus y is equal to 5k for some k in z. Thus, y minus x is equal to 5 times minus k, or you might have thought minus 5k, but it doesn't matter how I order them, right? Which means that y minus x is also divisible by 5. So 5 divides y minus x, so y is related to x. So x being related to y forced y to be related to x. So we have symmetry. And now let's do transitivity. So what do we need for transitivity? Well, we need three elements in Z that have the property that if that x is related to y and y is related to Z. And now we have to show, using the, our, the definition of our relation up here, that x is related to z. So let's parse this. This means that x minus y um, is equal to 5k and y minus z is equal to, let's say, 5l, 5 times, this is some, I'll use something other than k. And now let's notice that um, that um, x minus y plus y minus z is equal to 5k plus 5l, which implies that, well, if I subtract these, I get a minus y and a plus y, so I get x minus z on the left-hand side x minus z is equal to, and I can factor 5 out of the right-hand side, 5 times k plus l thus what? Um, x minus y can be written as 5 times something, so x minus y is divisible by 5, so 5 divides I mean x minus z is divisible by 5, so 5 divides x minus z Thus, um, x is related to z. I could put the little box, really, I'm only putting the box here because I'm out of space. What I really should write is, therefore, since this relation is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive, it is an equivalent relation. Now, in the next video, I'll, sh I'll show you how to think about these in terms of graphs.